Well, for more on this, we're now joined via Zoom by Piwaba Madokwe, who's the EFF Member of Parliament. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, good evening to you and the viewers out there. Your party is very disappointed uh, in what's happened, not just what's happened to the victims, uh, but the role perhaps that the mining house uh, has played. Um, yes, that is correct, uh, because unfortunately, um, this is not the first time that the community had actually raised its concerns um, and its frustrations and perhaps also saying that they felt that they were not safe in their mind. It was not only that, but also how they were not happy with the fact that they were not benefiting from the mine. But it is not the first time that um, the various departments as well have engaged with the uh, ownership of the mine in terms of that they actually needed to put much more tight security measures and to actually make sure that they adhere to everything that is expected mm. of them. So it is quite unfortunate that this incident happened um, while um, those conversations were happening. Um, and also when the cries and the laments of the community members in particular fell on deaf hands because it is not the first time that they had actually raised these issues. And yeah, that is why then we're like, we, it, we, we are very much concerned um, and we're not happy with how things have been done as well. Um, it's even worse when the mining management as of recently would come and say, no, according to him, everything was safe and secure. How does one say everything was safe and secure when three hundreds of people have been displaced, when families have lost loved ones, when farmers have lost livestock, when there are people who are still unaccounted for? And I think anyone can who has seen what is happening in just keeps day can see for themselves that there's no way that everything was safe and secure when it came to the dam. So there needs to be accountability that is taken by the management of the mine and everyone responsible. What about oversight? Should the authorities have been checking and uh, uh, making sure that these mining houses abide by minimum safety standards? Um, that is definitely correct. Like I said, um, it's not like this incident, as much as it happened and it wasn't expected, it is not like there were not warning signs before. And mm -hmm. it is not like the community members had not engaged because I know that when we engaged with the community members, they said, look, we even spoke to the Minister of Mineral Resources about three or four months ago, and he refused to respond to some of the issues that we were raising. Uh, of course, the issues that the community members were raising were not just about the dam mm -hmm. and the mining activities, but everything else relating to how the main was operating and how they themselves um, were not benefiting from the mine. And it is quite unfortunate now that what they are then um, getting is that the consequences of mining activities which were not done correctly they are the ones that are at the receiving end and they some of them have had to pay with their lives but oversight should have been done um we have received uh, reports from the department that they had engaged the mine um and that the department of water and sanitation had also engaged the mine on a number of occasions but what is also very disturbing is when one of them, the mayor of the, the municipality said, look, these people were told a long time ago to not even build there, which I feel or we feel that that is also deviating and not taking accountability. Because if those people were not supposed to have built there, then how did they get services such as water and electricity, which they got from government? So those are some of the things that concern us quite a lot, that instead of actually taking responsibility and making sure that people are okay, we are now looking at a situation where government is also trying to pass the buck to the next person. And it is very important that mm. thorough investigations are done so that one is able to determine why um, the dam best, why we're in the situation that we're in now. And it is only then that one can actually even determine who is responsible. And the responsibility, as much as the mind must take full account in most of the responsibility, but also the government as well. It has a responsibility to take over uh, oversight. And this is not just in this mine alone, but communities have been crying across the country about all the issues that they are facing in relation to mining, especially mining communities. And all their cries have been falling on deaf ears. And what that therefore means is that we have to wait until another disaster strikes before we actually listen to our people. Our people live next to these mines. They get first-hand experience of what is wrong and what is right. 
And it is important that we actually take them into consideration when they are raising issues around mining in their areas. In your statement uh, that you issued today as a party, you said that this disaster confirms uh, long-standing uh, 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 stance that you have, that there are much deeper and more urgent issues in the mining industry. Tell us about, <coughs> excuse me, about those. Sorry about that. No, that is definitely correct. I think all of us would understand that um, the past couple of weeks have actually whenever we speak about mining, they've been um, occupied or they've been dominated mostly about illegal mining and how the government has been clamping down on illegal mining would so get stats after stats about how many people have been arrested and all these things. But there's also a survey that actually showed that South Africa not so long ago was one of the world's top 10 worst um, mining investment areas. And a number of reasons were given, and the issue of illegal mining was not one of them. A number of issues were given in terms of um, how even the railway infrastructure makes it extremely difficult for mine uh, for miners to for mining companies to to work. Um, it was the issue of legislation as well, and how legislation makes it extremely difficult to work. It is also the fact that communities as well have been lamenting for the longest time that these mining companies are not um, adhering to their social responsibility. They're not adhering to their social labor plans. And regardless of how often the communities would go back to them and say, look, according to the laws of this country, we're supposed to be benefiting from whatever is happening in these mines and it is not happening. And these are things that have also been reported um, a number of times to the departments and relevant authorities. But there is no one that actually goes and holds these mining companies accountable. Um, some of the activities have affected the environment. Some of these activities have actually put people in a situation where um, they have uh, respiratory diseases, their water is affected, and all those things. And there's never been a situation where we've actually had a report from government saying that this mine will withdrawn its license because of environmental issues. We have withdrawn the license of this mine because it is not adhering to its social labor plans. None of that happens. People cry and people lament it. No one actually pays attention to that. So it is actually true that there are much bigger and much more concerning issues that deal with the issue of the mining industry that need to be taken into account. And this is actually one of them, especially considering the fact that the community itself says, look, we have spoken a number of times and we have said, raised a number of issues about this mine in particular especially when the department itself says, look, we have spoken to the mine and we actually even asked them as about two years ago to stop operations. Um, we've spoken to the mine to put in measures and that has not happened. And the fact that this conversation has been happening over and over again and no one has actually thought about withdrawing um, the, the mining license or actually fining the company or taking much more drastic measures but instead has opted to actually converse and beg a mine that has not been adhering to our laws. That says a lot about how big the issues of mining are in South Africa. MP, uh, Ms. Madogwe, we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you very, very much indeed uh, for uh, giving us uh, your views, uh, strong views about a very important issue. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you so much for having us as well. Good night. Thank, thank you so much. That's uh, Piwaba Madogo, who's the EFF Member of Parliament, talking about the mining industry in general, uh, highlighted sadly by another uh, incident uh, in the mining sector where people have lost their homes and they're displaced as a result of a mine dam, a dam wall collapsing, despite warnings and concerns by the community about their safety.